from. And uh, yeah, we've been just uh, to wrap up the course. Uh, we did the, we started the 8th of February and we did a bit of the intro. We created the hypothesis module. We tested hypothesis uh, with Adriano. We also managed to, to scope the MVP in quite a few lessons, I think three lectures. Then uh, we also, with copy, we focused in leverage analytics uh, for prediction models. And again, with Edu, we had the opportunity to, to go into launching strategies and sharpening skills. So I think in, in general, it has been quite complete. we touched a bit of everything. And we also, I think we found time to, to go into the details. And also we did some additional classes in which we could wrap up some concepts, especially with the MVP and uh, the one-on-one sessions in which we've been uh, reviewing a bit the concepts and actually putting them into practice in your, in your projects, right? So I think maybe we could start, I don't know if uh, Katrina wants to mention something before we start. No, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'll hold my comments for after. Okay. So I am MF. I don't know if we should, if, if who's going to share the screen to have, yeah. Okay. I, I guess that everyone should share their screen according to their presentations, right? So they can manage their, okay. Okay, so this is a difficult choice. Who's the first one, right? <laughs> Let's be easy. Who wants to be the first one? <laughs> okay. I'm happy to go. I also prefer to be the first one usually. Me because... too. I'm happy to go. So Yvonne, I, I guess, you know, we have 10 minutes more or less. Yes. And after that, uh, we will share some questions and, and have a bit of discussion time, short. So, I mean, if you want to share your screen and guidance your presentation. Sure, sure, sure. So while I do this, here it is. Share my screen. You see it? Yeah, perfect. It's working. So hello everyone. Thank you for being here because there's people that we haven't seen before. And thank you for your time and attention. Uh, my name is Yvonne Martin. I have attended to the bootcamp for product management. And my project, my talk is called Power On because I wanted to uh, talk about the self product management when I am the product. And the agenda for our talk today is personal branding, my professional challenge and the solution that I found for this. So let's get started. Does any of you know who this gentleman is? He is a business guru, Tom Peters. And already in 1997, he wrote an article that uh, is called A Brand Called You. So the importance of working on our personal brand. And I guess that some famous artists already knew about it. So the personal brand is very, very important. And you will ask me why now, why it's key at this moment. So uh, there's three figures and data that I wanna share with you. That is the high unemployment rate that we have in Spain, approximately 16%. Then the hidden job market that exists. I found an article that uh, approximately 70% of job opportunities are not seen in the market. And also the World Economic Forum has published a report, the Future of Job Report, that states that almost 50% of employees will have to reskill by 2025. So we are in a moment where the job market is quite tough difficult and opportunities are not seen. On the other hand, we've seen that branding matters. Here are some figures, um, companies that have a consistent brand presentation across platforms increase revenues up to 23%. Email has a media return of investment of 122%. 
And um, some vendors, like 53%, have lost orders because they don't have online presence. So understanding that we are in a difficult and challenging job market, that brands are important in order to build connections and sell services, I've designed my professional challenge. And here, just to give you some context for the ones that don't know me because you, know, you haven't been in the class. So in my case, my professional activity is structured into business line. I do consultancy projects. On the other hand, I also deliver conferences, webinars, and speeches. And what it has happened is that I have also been affected by the global crisis with COVID. So for me, it has been the time to design and define my challenge. And uh, this is my question that I've been working on, is how can I power boost my personal brand? And uh, my solution is that I will work and, and build a personal website where I can showcase my public speaking activity so educational organizations can see the information, can obtain information about what I do and book a meeting. So my service that I want to offer on this personal website is delivering innovation talks to help students achieve their professional goals. And my acceptance criteria for this website is that the customer shall be able to book a meeting. So I've seen that WordPress can have a plugin with uh, Calendly. So this is my, my, the feature that I want to build on, on the website. And the key benefit of having a website, here the source comes from Imma Batcher. Uh, it's very important that um, customers can reach you. And uh, I think having a website means that customers can reach you on a 24 seven. And for me, what is the most important is that they can reach you when it's best for them at their best convenience. And uh, as we have seen during the class, uh, product managers, when we arrive to a solution, the solution has built on the previous work we've done. And this is why for me, it's key uh, to share with you all the work that we have done. Also as product managers, we work in teams. So it was important for me to highlight this so in my case, to come to this solution, I've worked on my portfolio. I've done empathy map, business model canvas, value proposition canvas, user stories, accepting criteria. I have received input and feedback from professors and colleagues, the valuable ones to ones with Promina. And also I've used the agile methodology that we have seen in the class and built a Kanban board in Notion to uh, classify and structure my network and leads. And from all this working process is also a thinking process. So my key insights that I wanna share with you is my first insight that it's an insight, but I think it's also my mantra is market yourself because you create your opportunities. So it's about ownership, it's about you delivering uh, your projects and your product. And this is my key insight and as I say, my mantra. And the second insights that I had is as product managers, we need to prioritize. So for me, my second insight, it was obvious from doing all these activities that having two business lines, uh, you have different markets, different customers, and I had to focus. So um, prioritizing and on what is what you're building. So in my case, I was focusing on my public speaking activity. The criteria to prioritize was that this business line is compatible with any other jobs that I can do. And they can accompany me through my career. And then understanding that uh, this is the customer needs. So as product managers, we have to build from customer. We are the customer advocate. So in my case, it's a B2B customer. And... Um, what I have identified is that uh, the, the persons working with, in educational organizations, they have to manage the agendas of the speakers, they have to program the activities, and also they want their programs to be successful and have positive reviews from the students. 
So in this case, customer needs are different from user needs. So this was a key insight. And also the journey that, um, that I uh, forecasted uh, very uh, easy and synthetic is that um, I have a lot of uh, presence in LinkedIn. So um, I can post something on LinkedIn. They can go to my website, book a meeting. The meeting is at their best convenience. So it's easier for them when they are managing all the agendas of speakers and professors to fit it at their best time. And then the result will, will be to deliver the speech. So these are the insights uh, from all the work that uh, we have done. And uh, how do I validate my solution? My previous experience, I have already collaborated with educational organizations like the Valley, the Parque Científico Universidad Miguel Hernández, and I have received um, positive um, feedback. So this is how I validated my, my solution. And um, if everything goes well, my objective to grow is uh, the moment I have segmented my market only for Spain. And um, I want to go international because having worked and lived in several countries like the US or Switzerland, I speak four languages. So this is how I would like to grow. Um, I go to new markets and uh, leveraging on my personal strengths. And um, how am I going to measure this? My KPIs and expected benefits is my main KPI is the number of projects and job offers that I will receive, uh, expected benefits and increase of income and also diversify revenue, revenue streams. The time frame is building a brand and brand awareness takes time. So my time frame is until the end of the year. And the positive outcome that I want uh, to, to obtain is coming back to the figures of the World Economic Forum. I think we have a huge challenge ahead of us when 50% of employees uh, need to reskill. So my impact uh, from my work is I want to positively impact students with ideas and concepts so they can thrive in their professional challenges. And um, my question uh, to you is, will you help me strike the pose? Thank you very much for your attention. And um, if uh, this conversation connects with you, uh, has resonated, I'm happy to connect. I'm on LinkedIn uh, with my name, I'm on Slack, and here's also my phone number. I'm happy to, to have a conversation and move on forward. So thank you. Thank you, Yvonne, for such a great speech and actually such a great timing. <laughs> exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So let's uh, give time for some potential questions of the audience. Hi. Um, I do have a few, actually. Um, so first of all, congratulations, Yvonne. I think that was pretty well explained. I think it is pretty unusual to see uh, I think the first time that I see a presentation of our product that is yourself, so I found that very interesting, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the storytelling is really great. And I really liked how in the beginning you really put it in context, right? There's so much uh, people looking for jobs and there's so many opportunities not seeing it. And you're right in between that as well, in, in which you are also trying to um, provide, you know, the, the, the consultancies and the... Um, and, um, and the lectures, you know, to uh, within this, this 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 field, what I was just missing is how you connect the needs of those uh, of those consumers. Meaning, um, what type of I, I, I believe that within the world of uh, consultancy and a company, you can reach them through several ways, right? You can give several types of consultancy, as, as well as several types of lectures. So maybe it will be worth it to try to validate from those that you do, which are the ones that has more market share or which are the ones that maybe 
um, people would be more interested. And that would be a way for you to validate as well in what specifically within your brand identity you could invest more. Maybe you, you want to uh, focus on, on one type of specific lecture because that has more markets or etc. cetera. Mm. So um, that, that, that will be my, my only device. I try to identify and now. I think you identified yourself within this, which is great. Now try to identify the market's opportunity um okay. for you within this world but um besides that i think it was very well explained and uh, well done and congratulations thank you thank you um <clears throat> sorry this is coffee um hi coffee um so yes i feel like uh you know adriano stole all the uh, the good points you know when he went first and he he, he mentioned everything that i wanted to say okay. So um, to save time and not repeat it, everything that Adriano said, I agree. Um, the, the things that I, I think was really hard to, to go with this approach, using yourself as a product. Um, but I think it would have been good to see a better focus on what your value proposition was, right? Like why okay. you versus everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think that's a that's a good thing to do. It sort of touches on on what Adriano said as well. Yes. Um, what I would like to see in the deck as well is um, how you're planning to target these customers, why you're going to use different channels, etc. Um, so I could ask that question now. Actually, how do you plan on when you talk about your growth? What channels are you planning on using? Um, have you thought about it? And what what do you think your best approach would be? Mm, yes. Um, thank you, Kofi. Yes, I think uh, st my starting point, it was uh, LinkedIn, because it's the platform that I use. And I think the second step for me, it's to do market research. If you want to go, uh, well, where to go, you have to do a little bit of market research. So understand if, for instance, uh, you want to say, okay, I want to approach uh, a schools or business schools in Portugal, do some market research. So my first option, I think, is LinkedIn. The second one, I would need to do market research. Yes. Okay. And the second question I have is the last one. I mean, there's more, but I'll, I'll pick two. Is you know, I find interesting when you said your time frame was the end of the year. Why that? Yes. Why that number? Um, because I said, um, well, that um, I would need probably a little bit of time and, and see. And I thought, okay, let's give yourself uh, until the end of the year to review if this is working or not working. So okay. I gave it. Uh, because also what I realized is that um, uh, connecting with people takes a lot of time. Networking, creating network and relations takes a lot of time. So I said that perhaps for me, you know, end of the year would be a good moment to review if my idea could work or not. Okay. Um, so I, I think that's great. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of recommendations, um, always nice to put in a target based on some level of uh, like you mentioned your kpis right so another thing that okay kind of added or elaborated more and there was like define your kpis then you can tie those kpis to definitive timelines and then you know that okay okay by the end of the year i'm expecting to get x number of customers or by the end of two, two weeks so you can you can actually train yeah. yourself to look at your kpis every two weeks and know whether you're on the right path or not and that will help you decide okay. whether you need to pivot or keep going in that path right so Recommendation yeah, to you, uh, time frame of a year, it's quite long. Try to find a shorter time with a more defined okay. KPI and you know how to pivot from there. All right. Thank you. But great presentation. Um, I feel uh, I should have gone first so that I could have said everything that Adriano said about the positive points. You know, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Great work. Thank you, Kofi. I, um, I think, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, as I mentioned, Yvonne also, uh, regarding the metrics, I mentioned that if, it, if you cannot measure it, it doesn't exist, right? So it's super important to, to know how to measure the product because actually some, a lot of projects are measured, but the information that you're collecting, it's not 
adding value. You just see KPIs. So it's important to use the right KPIs and actually uh, to be, you know, uh, very honest with the KPIs also and target them and have a follow up on them because that yeah. is the diagnosis of how everything is working and how you can improve that. Yes. Yes, very good to, to link the KPIs to time and review and don't give such a long period. Yes, I get it. Thank you. Great. So let's move to the next victim. <laughs> Since uh, I'm asking for volunteers, I'm going to do that again. Who wants to be the second one? We I stop can, share. I can be the second one. Now that it seems that it's quiet here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to be hard after Yvonne's great presentation, to be honest. But uh, I will do my best. OK, so um, if I share the screen, can I still see your faces or? Yeah, you have a small square. screen right uh, but then if I go if I go present ah I still see it here that is perfect okay well good afternoon everyone my name is Immaculada Arteaga most of you already know me First, I truly wanted to, to say thank you to the group and to the teachers and to Katrina, because although it's something that uh, we, well, I'm actually gonna take my mask on off, so you can say my face properly. I know that is something that you usually say, but honestly, this course has really helped me uh, put into places uh, what I wanted to do and it, totally fulfill my expectations because as I will tell you now, I and I told you at the beginning, I have been doing the stuff, something's right, something's wrong, but I didn't know how to put names into my mind and structure it properly. And it just gives me so much security right now on what me and my team, my team and I are doing. So, uh, this afternoon, I'm going to present you Batchor and inside of Batchor, our project of MVP1 and how we have uh, reached uh, that uh, project. Um, what is Batchor? Batchor is for non editors or non designers who struggle to other edit their product pictures. Batchor is an online tool that edits and personalizes automatically hundreds of images per minute in one click, saving companies time and making image improve and enhance so that they convert more. Mm, okay. What's, uh, well, as we all know, uh, an, an image sells more than a hundred words, worth more than a hundred words. And especially in the COVID environment, I don't even have to say that uh, e-commerce has increased and that image is essential to the sale. But here uh, we have, we, we found a problem. And what is the problem is that the companies that want to sell through image on their platform have to process them. And that takes like 10 to 15 minutes to edit a single image. And actually we found as well that the people that are editing and processing those images, most of them don't have the proper skills. I mean, they are just managing other stuff and then they also have to take care of the image in many of the companies, even the big ones, you would be surprised. So what is our solution? We propose an automated tool that process edits and modifies the image for online platforms. What, what is our value proposition? Well. Without Butcher, you would take um, 2,500 hours to edit about uh, 10,000 image a month. That is an amount of images that is pretty normal for an e-commerce. And with Butcher, you can reduce that to six hours. 
saving more than 99% of their time that they can in, um, use to do other valuable stuff. But to this problem, we haven't gotten here just from one day to the other. Actually, I realized the whole process and the name of the process through this course. And we did went through a journey of problem validation. I will tell you a little bit more on how Batcher started. Batcher started a year ago with the hypothesis of professional photographers need to edit a lot of pictures and they don't want to spend the time editing them. What did we do? We uh, did interviews, about 50 interviews. We interviewed about 50 professional photographers and we realized that our hypothesis was wrong because actually professional photographers enjoyed their time editing the pictures. First, first reason. Second reason, they were hesitant to pay or accept it on automatization. And third reason, they even some of them even got angry because they said that that was the main point of being a photographer and that they were we were going to like kill the job for them. From that feedback, we said, okay, so professional photographers are not going to be our buyer personas. However, through interviewing, interviewing different profiles, we started to talk uh, with companies and e-commerce and they said, huh, that could be interesting because we do have a lot of images that they, some of our users upload and they're very dark, they're like crooked, they're, they're not uh, proper colorful and they're, they don't stand out. So we have our man, account managers that do what they can, but they're not professionals on pictures. So uh, our image could be totally improved. So we say, we say, okay, what does a company want to improve? Is that efficiency? How do we do that? Through an API so that they don't even have to touch. They would upload the pictures and they would come out completely edited according to their preferences. Perfect, perfect solution. We were this time super sure that that was the solution for the, to the problem. Again, we went this time, we didn't do the, the interviews. We went already, launched the API with the MVP that we had designed. And uh, we found out that that was not enough, that, uh, the, um, that the companies weren't buying us and they weren't buying us because they were on the, the on the account manager department but in order to install the app they needed the development so it would get stuck there so we realized that we needed a first step which was a web app uh, that they could use without having to integrate to the app in order to uh, make shorter the process of commercialization and that is how we get to the the mvp one which is what we are doing and defining right now and thanks to this uh, course we are doing this time properly uh, like i said before uh, we did found our user which is the account manager and realized that our customer which is the manager or the director like a step further uh, is the one that pays for the software and the one that uses the software is the different person, which normally doesn't have designer or editing skills. With that was valuable information. So you, we could define what uh, the MVP was going to be. I talked uh, about value. Well, I'm going to show you this actually, because I, I I think I'm running out of time, so but I but I'm gonna show you this uh, so you can understand better. This is uh, uh, without butcher, up to the left, and then to the right with butcher, is one of, of example of what butcher actually does and the ultimate value of it. Okay, and you say okay, but there are probably many many softwares for um, processing images online. Yes, but how do we differentiate ourselves? we decided to focus on the personalized designs 
and the style and the tone and visual point of the of the image not only the technical part because we believe that through that they will convert more and not only save time but convert and more and get more benefits so through wireframing through, through those hypotheses and those interviews, we define it the MVP one, which is what we're going, working now, which is a web app where users can easily edit, remove backgrounds, add personalized designs, and optimize their product images in a few clicks. And we did start to work with uh, wireframes. How did we get to here? Through user stories and job stories. Here's an example uh, of a couple for us is essential to measure registration because up to now we don't have a proper process so uh, as uh, one of the must have requirements obviously in order to be able to use and validate uh, our web app is that a new as a new user they want to be able to create an account without any help from our managers this is the way we use it, uh, user stories and job stories and we are still using them and developing as we finish defining the, the, the web app. How we are going to work on that? Well, we have uh, defined a roadmap and we want to launch by the 26th of, 25th of May. And we have, as you can see here, defined on which week we're going to work on each part of those uh, that MVP um, web app that we will launch we also what we want to get from here well first i want to talk about the sanctions okay so from the information that we have we are assuming that most users with access the web app through google chrome and computer that they will need a personalized configuration they will edit in batch and they will use at least two features and how we're going to measure if it's successful or not this mvp by the number of users they register without any help. We want to reach 200 by the end of the year and so that we can have 50 converted by the end of the years. I probably should uh, scale down those uh, goals uh, in months and not in, in such a long time. Also, we want to measure the, the increase of number of images processes so that we can uh, get them to a next level, which is upselling. We also want to measure the number of processes to edit that they start, but they don't finish in, in, so that we can know if there is any bug or, or anything, but not so good design. And uh, the number of personalized configurations so we can uh, save, so we can validate if they actually need that personalization or not. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. We uh have defined previously a business model which is uh, SaaS b2b and they will pay for volume we have different packages uh, monthly uh, so it's quite a simple one it doesn't it doesn't have much of complication with the business model and the commercial uh, way will be through linkedin for now because uh, we believe that our companies are uh, can be found in, in LinkedIn. Well, uh, we do this with a great team of six people. We're three developers and three business and commercial people. And uh, I actually believe in that uh, this course has also helped us. Uh, this is a perfect example of the IT team and business team and as Romina knows we did have some issues throughout the course but we have I'm very proud to say that we have developed it through user stories mechanism and other uh, tools and communications team communications tools to uh, get the perfect match and now we are working as a true team I believe and uh, we're very excited to launch the, the app which I will obviously share with you and i think yeah i've been a bit i went a little bit over time sorry for that uh but um i'll be happy to listen to your comments uh and questions or whatever so thank you so much for listening to me thank you Emma, for such a great presentation i think also 
the design of the slides actually are, are very, very user friendly. And I think it's a great work. Actually, I think you, you've covered mostly everything at a glance in the project. So I really think it's, it's, it's a great project that you're working on in Butcher. So congrats. Thank you. Actually, you know, like I, I thought I was going to go short than 10 minutes. So I kind of wanted to, I told you all our story, which I think is nice because that way you know more about our story. And actually it's a perfect example of iteration, I think. Uh, and then I was like, oh my God, I need to go faster. But thank you for listening those extra min in, minutes to me. Our pleasure. <laughs> so let's go to the questions. I won't go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I have like, I don't have like question, but I have like comments, I will say. Sure, please uh, do. So I think I really love the storytelling that works at the beginning. I think it was very powerful. As uh, Romy say, I think like your presentation was uh, very nice in terms of design. Uh, you had like very good problem statement and value proposition, uh, which I really enjoy. Um, at some point before, when you come to the solution, I was like, okay, but how did she reach this conclusion? But then you went uh, through that, which I really appreciated because it was something I, I will be looking for. Um, one thing, and I think it will be for the entire presentation. Um, it's, I think like the content was like perfect and it was like super structured and super clear. But the delivery, I think, could have been like improved in the sense of uh, uh, like the storytelling and how you can like uh, make this like exciting, how you start a presentation, how you conclude it with a powerful like call to action or something like Yvonne like did uh, before, you know, with like the Madonna where she connected like something from the beginning to the end. Definitely. With, yeah. uh, so those kind of little thingies seems like stupid, but I think like for the delivery of the uh, uh, presentation, it makes it uh, much more uh, powerful. Definitely. And yeah. uh, that will be my, my only thing that I would say, like if you want to re, I don't know, say, uh, and like adjust yeah. it, is like the content is perfect. Everything was super clear. Uh, your uh, thought process was also super clear, but I will try to maybe like perform like uh, sometimes to make it more uh, like a story and to put like some little chicks that make us engage more uh, with your with your product. And that's that's it on my side. But uh, overall, like, yeah, it was amazing and uh, amazing presentation and and very clear and, and nice product as well. So congrats. Thank you. I'm gonna jump in there. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, Kofi, I saw you unmute yourself. <laughs> um, no, I wanted, to, I wanted to jump in because I had a different opinion than Eduardo. Um, first, big, big, big congrats. Um, you did an excellent job. Uh, the problem certainly resonated as a company. How much time do we waste with this kind of stuff? And like, bam, with this slide, with your value proposition, for me, it was super simple. And in its simplicity, it spoke volumes. I like I liked that you decided to do that. And in general, your slides um, were not clustered. There's nothing that repels me more than a clustered slide. So I really appreciated that. Stylistically, this is where I sort of differ with um, Eduardo, is that um, I really liked your storytelling. Um, because, and of course, I'm thinking of it from more of like pitches that I've seen with investors. And in fact, my own experiences speaking to investors. And when you did this slide with your problem validation story, um, for me, it was really engaging because you were in a very humanistic way um, displaying your thought process, right? And I, and I understood how you were thinking and the logic behind it. And you're being assessed for that ultimately when you're talking to an investor. So for me, I found that really powerful. And I saw, okay, you have some humanity, you're down to earth and you're showing how you're working through a problem. And I sort of felt confidence in what you were doing. Um, for me, what I was missing was um, I wanted to know more about your pricing model and in general, sort of the unit economics of what you're doing. Yep, definitely. Right? Marketing um, metrics. Yeah. Yeah. Go to market strategy, all that good yeah. stuff. 
um but overall super super yeah. solid well done thank you thank you yeah, yeah yeah i do i do and actually i think i mean i cannot be more transparent it's like i think that's what we need to work more on from now on you know like i'm very confident on the problem product but in terms of go to market um pricing and stuff i mean it's clear that we still are working on that and we will improve for sure hopefully yeah thank you okay. somebody wants to speak before coffee <laughs> no okay so coffee if you want. I, i don't have some comments but um i can wait for coffee first <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so I think I think uh, it was a great presentation. Um, uh, I think I side with Eduardo on on that side. Um, in 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 all reality, it's like I think time is probably the most important when you when you when you pitch. So try to get your most important facts out of the way, leave time for questions, and then you can you can put in your stories, your personal stories at that moment to to justify um your answers um so so yeah but i think uh presentation wise i i love the fact that you presented the the concrete data that could ring a bell and an alarm and say okay yes let's go with that um that was great the only questions i have and maybe you don't have answers to but it's it's for sure something you need to think about because you're implementing a SaaS model and And so it becomes more about capturing uh, X number of customers per per uh, within a certain amount of time, right? It's great to say you want to capture 200 leads and then convert 50, but what if capturing 200 leads means that you have to spend a million euros to capture those 200, right? Then your business becomes lopsided. So think about your cost of acquisition um, as well and, and put in targets for that uh, to say, well, on a weekly basis, I want to spend this much in order to get this many leads. Otherwise, it makes no sense getting those 50 uh, customers, right? You may end up getting 50 customers and they are all paying you 200 euros a month, but then you're spending 1,000 euros a month per customer to get them. And then your, your business model goes out the window. So that's my question for you was whether you considered your, your CAC um, and what your target for your CAC is in, in, that, uh, in that timeline. And if not, I think you should do so. Yeah, um, I do. I do have uh, projections uh, and with the CAC defined by by month, monthly. Uh, uh, but I didn't honestly. I didn't focus on that uh, for the presentation. But I, I do, and I probably should cut down from monthly to weekly in terms of like how many leads we're gonna get weekly, uh, how many users we want to register, how many, how do how do, how do we want them to 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 perform but I, i that i have a doubt there whether to do it weekly or monthly because of the way that uh, companies uh, work so I, i still don't know if the unit is the month the week or every three weeks i don't know if i make myself like if i explain myself in the yeah. like when you measure uh, the, the the perform of an app I still, and I think we think we saw this with Eduardo. Like I still like the the how do you say the churn rate? I still don't know Charity. if the unit would be week, two weeks, or month because I don't know how often they're gonna use it. Well, churn churn should be related to your to, to the timeline for churn should be monthly because your your MRR is going to be monthly and that's how you're going to manage to, to, to calculate your revenue, right? And, 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 and ultimately your LTV as well. So I think it should be monthly, but in terms of your target for your, your metrics, at this early stage, you need to be, I would recommend being on a weekly basis and it's easy but, for you to say, okay, we are on track to meet our monthly target if you're measuring yeah. weekly. If you say by the end of the month, you need 200 uh, leads and then after your first week, you only have two leads, you know that you're not going to meet unless you do something drastically different, you know yeah. you'll not meet your month's end, right? So okay. that's what you're yeah, So what's your CAC, by the way? Well, I have it here. My CAC, according to this, the first year is going to be 1,200, so 1,200 per client. That's what my that's product is. Of... And the lifetime oh. value, 5,000. Oh. All right. And the, the ticket Good. is about 500, the, okay. the, the medium ticket. 
I'm sure those numbers will change. I mean, those are projections. Like Eduardo, uh, with the, we did that on Eduardo's classes. Like, the, <laughs> and I think Sophie said, like, I don't believe in projections, but yeah. <laughs> but that's what Perfect. we have planned. I, I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. Well, thank you very much for sharing your, your story. It was a great job. Thank you. Great. So uh, moving on. Sorry, there is just one thing that yeah. I want to say. I promise I'll be very quickly. There is one thing that I think I would really help you to market better your product is that your value proposition is focused on how much time you save, right? But those, uh, the people who are interested in saving time are your users, not necessarily your buyers. So trying to convert that into money, how much of those hours um, uh, if you convert that into money, would that company save yeah. those 2,500 yeah. hours would, would give you a cost, right? And, and that will justify the yeah. pricing of your products to, to your consumers. That was yeah. the only advice that I would give. Yeah, and we are actually, we're working with AliExpress. Actually, now there is the anniversary. And if you see the creativities with the picture, that's made with Batcher. And we want to access the numbers of increase of conversion from plaza project we want to ask them as customer how much more increase like how much have increased using our software so that it's not only saving time but increasing the money all right, cool. all right. thanks great um so moving on we have sophie sarah nazareth i have a code of a uh, wheel of names ready if you yeah, but I'm trying to be friendly, a friendly teacher, and asking them who wants to. Okay, Nazareth, perfect. I can go as uh, I, I'm going to be a client of uh, Bachelor very soon, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, and also for the um, color palette similarity with Bachelor, you will see. Nice. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nazareth. I am the co-founder of Point Life with Kids. As a mother, but also as a digital user, I face an unserved need when I have my son. The great advantages that technology gives you to facilitate your life, like booking a cab, search for restaurants, or find the perfect accommodation, became, became a struggle when you try to do it with kids. Decision factors such as age, accessibility with a trolley, uh, or even toilets availability are lost in a very red ocean of uh, blogs and articles, leaving you with two choices, basically. Whether spend hours crafting your own plan or uh, go to the same places all over again. Oh, sorry. Uh, why is not... Uh, in addition, there is no quality standards that, uh, or expert opinions that help us decide where to go with some degree of tranquility. Point was born when we checked the same problem was shared amongst parents. Those who wanted to enjoy life with kids wherever they are, deserve a tool to help them find out, book, and also participate helping the parents' community. So we ran some interviews, uh, surveys, and an active conversations in uh, mostly in social networks in order to go from an idea to an actual solution. Uh, founded by two mothers, Point helped parents find child-friendly places whatever, whenever they are, rated and recommended by real parents and with, the, with an easy booking platform for services, leisure, and activities, the ultimate tool for life with kids. So point adds, what point does is to, to add a layer of specialization and useful information to the map of the city. Everything from museums to parks, from cafeterias to caretakers uh, fits in the platform as life with kids happens everywhere. Within the same platform, uh, parents can find uh, a theater play for a four-year-old kid, a restaurant nearby with a high chair and changer, and also a park uh, to complete the plan for the day. They can later tell the others about the experience helping other parents. Uh, so they, they help us build trust and a sense of, of belonging. Uh, this, is also, this also helps providers 
grab an idea of uh, exactly how what they need, what the customer needs, and how to optimize and enhance the service uh, they are providing. So a real need that triggers an action that can be so rewarding that makes you want to invest a little time to, to share with others, a give back uh, kind of cycle. But it cannot only be an, a good idea, it has to be a business opportunity. Point Marketplace uh, brings a chance to small, bit, small and medium enterprises and business to sell their products online to a very targeted customer. STEM, course, STEM courses, birthday parties, child psychology consultation, and of course, theater and theaters and, and restaurants can be booked directly in point. When scoping our MVPs, uh, MVPs and, and building our roadmaps, we prioritize those that bring performance. Once the MVP of the marketplace platform was launched, we have a sort of, uh, uh, a very prototypic kind of uh, launch uh, um, um, before COVID. And then we launched uh, a better product, but also still an MVP in November 2020. And we started focusing sales and marketing in acquisition uh, of users and customers. Uh, the product team then uh, started digging and analyzing uh, the data that we have gathered to make uh, the refactor of the search engine and the redesign of the whole finding experience according to the, what they, the users uh, were asking us to provide. So our product is in continuous iteration and optimization. We started by the end of the 2019 launching a very, very, very basic prototype and then we move uh, towards meeting the needs of the customers and the, the users. Um, what happened? COVID uh, in between, uh, house, um, uh, we have to stay uh, at home, uh, we cannot go anywhere. So uh, we, we went back to our mission and our why, and this is uh, to help parents everywhere, whenever, wherever they are. So. Uh, we started uh, talking about online uh, courses and, and uh, trying to, to solve their need to be online. So our biggest challenge uh, as a as, uh, as company is uh, to stay focused on our goals and, and to take the right decisions. Don't, uh, as in product term, in product, product wise, don't overbuild, uh, test as much, as much as we can and also fail often in, in order to learn, and we fail like a lot. Uh, the market in, in Spain uh, is, uh, is in the rise. 40% uh, of the millennials are, are already, or we are already having children, and their expectations uh, are moving the market in the industry. Due to COVID, the numbers and estimation are more risky than ever, as you know. Uh, so instead of relying only on the marketplace that takes time and money to, to start uh, working, we, uh, we rely on different uh, business model streams, uh, as, as for example, uh, data and also um, companies, uh, corporative uh, services that we are giving. Uh, this is a trend that is happening. Uh, parenting uh, is, is growing, as is also a tech and, and everything related to uh, the, the life with kids. And it's a, it's a market that is uh, numbered by Forbes in $46 billion in the US. There are some big players as YouTube or Spotify having or developing uh, products that are uh, kids oriented. Uh, and also there are some companies that so, uh, like Sawyer or Winnie uh, in the US that are uh, in series A and raising money and interest in the market. Also the super giant baby tree in, in China, which is valued in more than $500 uh, billion. Our competitors are strong uh, and that help us improve and keep up because we differentiate ourselves by targeting only parent ecosystem and uh, creating impact in, in our society by giving back all the data uh, and all the inputs that parents and businesses are, are giving us. Our strategy to go to market is very simple um, to make parents uh, happy. Uh, how? By being relevant, useful, on time, consistent and approachable. They make point uh, by adding and rating places and booking activities and letting us uh, transform their, their inputs and, and their data into building better spaces and, and better cities. 
So, well, this is some uh, vanity metrics, some presses that, press uh, releases that, uh, that we have. Uh, we are very fortunate because uh, the, the product resonates with, uh, with, with people. Uh, and, well, we have participated in, in some top programs uh, in the community as the Tuan Valley or Seed Rocket. We have been residents in the Google for Startup Campus in Madrid, and we have um, the, the lucky of being awarded by the UU Prize uh, for, for by woman woman startup community for working towards uh, reducing the, the gender bridge. Also, well, uh, our forecast, uh, our expectation is uh, that we are Luckily, uh, launching in a staging uh, our um, our new and improved um, search engine on Monday. That's why I I don't have like uh, a lot of time to to prepare anything else uh, because we are very focusing on that. And um, because uh, of that, I really want to um, make my my point of uh, gratefulness uh, for the code op because it really changed my mind uh, my mindset. Uh, in order to put uh, and launch a product. So uh, what we want to do is launch this, uh, this new experience uh, and also optimize, keep optimizing the, the marketplace, um, start testing and prototyping uh, ANA, which is an, intelli an, an intelligent, artificial, uh, intelligent artificial assistant for, for plants with kids and also uh, a SaaS, uh, a very basic SaaS uh, dedicated to, to our providers because they are already asking, asking for it. Uh, uh, this project is backed by an all-female and all-mother team of founders and partners uh, with one mission, parents happy everywhere. So thank you very much for listening and that's it. Thank you, Nasareth, for your great presentation. I think indeed, uh, the COVID has been challenging into building a marketplace of activities which rely on presence. So I think the shift uh, has been challenging for, for many business models. So that actually uh, brings a question to me because you mentioned that due to COVID, you had to include some online courses. Mm -hmm. So regarding the content, do you have like your own teachers or are you partnering with other schools or how to speak? No, we, we, we are not um, providing the, the activities. Uh, we are providing the, the space and the technology for others to, to, to sell online their courses. For example, we sell the courses of Nanify. We mm -hmm. also sell uh, all the La Casita de Inglés and Nemo Marlin, and also all the national uh, museums, uh, archeological and, and the other 16 uh, national museums. They give us uh, their their product, their agenda, and their content, and, and we put it in the in the platform that we. So you will be a, a reseller deliver. as well. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And regarding the discounts of your resellers, for example, what makes you different different from Atrapalo, for example? Yeah, because you need to have a competitive advantage in the price. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not only in the price, but also in the specialization. If you go to Atrapalo or Fever or TripAdvisor or uh, even Bright, mm -hmm. for example, and you try to find uh, activities for kids, uh, they will luckily serve you the one that are the usual ones. The mm -hmm. zoo, the, um, the, the thematic parks, and that's it. Uh, when I first, uh, to, to, give, to give you a, a, an example of differentiation, when I first uh, searched in Fever for uh, an activities for, for my three years old, it, uh, the, the first one that popped in was a casino. So uh, they are indeed a very specialized platform for, for ticketing, but they are not specialized in parents and in parenting. So I, I'm unable to find the age of the, of the activity I'm, uh, I can't find uh, if uh, the, the um, place where I'm going to take my 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 son is uh, prepared, has an, an insurance, has a, a changer. So the speciality is not only in the price, but uh, but more in the specialization for the for the niche, and also uh, in terms of what are we offering in this platform, because we can you can find 
everything, everything really that uh, makes life with kids um, comprehensive. Like for example, stations or um, airports, which are very important when you travel with kids, uh, is is a really uh, it's a big struggle uh, to to have them like entertained. Mm -hmm. So we we recommend these these kind of places too. Okay, thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> really. Hello. Um, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll be very quickly. Um, um, I feel that the presentation was cool to understand what it is your mission and your objective. I missed a little bit uh, seeing the product, meaning okay. how exactly is the platform? How do you list those online events or the um, offline events? I know that COVID is challenging as well. Fun fact, I'm changing industry right now and I'm going to also an industry of event, Eventbrite, as you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in Ticket um, in the in the first uh, years of oh, Ticket yeah. <laughs> Nice. So, so <laughs> I'm nice moving from, I, I moved to there, but um, what I was thinking when you were talking about um, COVID and, and the mm -hmm. challenge that comes with it is that if your product is, is something that can reach everywhere, um, consider that there is not all the places are in the same situation, right? So maybe you want to focus on a mm -hmm. country as well that is better in terms of COVID. Mm -hmm. And there you can also still have opportunities to your original mission of offering um, local and live experiences no, for, for the parents. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take that in consideration. But um, the, mm -hmm. I, I understood the product. I only missed seeing, seeing it uh, a little bit. I think that the Anna, the assistant that you described, that's quite a, very interesting. So I would like to mm -hmm. see how that would actually work and solve a, a parent issue. But um, besides that, well done. Thank you very much. We, we did the, the Wizard of Thoughts with, with Anna to validate it. And, and it's, uh, well, it's something that uh, is happening and is uh, very well received by, by the community. So thank you. Okay, so I think Kofi wanted to ask something. No, just a um, more question about talking a little bit more about your the go-to-market strategy, if you could elaborate a bit more on that. Totally, yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm always um, doubtful about this uh, part of the presentation in the in the pitch deck. In the pitch deck, um, you guys want to see the the actual strategy, like the sales and uh, channel, all the channels and the, and all the. Okay. Well, let's let's let's, let's keep it. Uh, um, I guess maybe one step at a time. So right now, do mm -hmm. you have any? What are your anticipated channels that can help you meet your goals? Uh, what, what, what do you think those channels are? Well, uh, we are in the, in, at this moment, we are uh, in this channel that I, that I mentioned, we are, the produce is life. Uh, we are making hard work in, the, in social communities. We are also investing uh, and testing. So most of all, we are investing and testing in, in social ads, both uh, Google ads and, and Facebook ads. Uh, and what we are doing in order to have the, the launch in, uh, in, May, in May is to put the sale uh, all together because we had kind of mm, not pay, not, didn't pay a lot of attention to, to, to sale and uh, it was a big mistake. So we learned from, from it and now we are trying to, to to improve it. Uh, and we are also uh, talking a lot with customers directly. We have uh, a lot of, mini, uh, of meetings with uh, medium and big players uh, in order to grab everything from them, uh, grab the need, uh, and then be able to deliver to the, to the small ones uh, in a more scalable way. But yeah, mm, we are moving kind of uh, everywhere. Yeah. One recommendation I will have is if, if you've got big clients, um, try mm -hmm. to see the client that's biggest with the most uh, traffic as well and see how you can piggyback on their, their traffic, right? I think it'll be a great way for, for you to quote unquote, redirect traffic towards um, your product. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the idea. Good stuff. Okay, so... Can I ask a question? Yes, first. Um... The, I saw that uh, you were with the Startup Explorer. Yeah. Did you raise money with them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we I raised. Uh, yeah, we, we raised uh, uh, 
uh, in, in the middle of the pandemic uh, highest point, uh, we achieved the objective in 24 hours. And oh, it was a really yeah. good experience, yes. Perfect, so I'll ask you because I have a sure. meeting with them next week. Absolutely. Actually, no I have already the contract sent to us. So I'll okay. ask you, we are in the process. Exactly, as whenever you need. Great. So it, let's move to Sophie versus Sarah. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. I thought you were gonna think, Sarah, we had a great presentation. <laughs> the, the last one, okay. So I share my screen. Um, uh, uh, uh. I don't know how I can share my screen. Share issue. I'll try. I need to allow, sorry. Don't worry. Okay. I have to quit, sorry. Uh, I think you need to restart Zoom when that happens. Maybe we we go with Sarah and, okay. and why would you restart? Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. Yeah, okay. So I go. Yes, you go. All yours. Cha 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 Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, kidding. Okay, one second. Uh, um, wait. A present. Okay. Compartir. We should all uh, send a. Uh, a promotion message to Canva for all the tools that he has provided us. <laughs> um, so we start, right? Yeah, all yours. Okay, with one second, I'm gonna quit this. You listen, you see my my screen? We see something, yes. but it's called mobile. Ah, okay, good. So, um, Thanks for being here, guys. Um, thanks for your patience because I've been the, the last one. Um, and I'm really happy of having taken the course and meeting all of you. And I think that from here, we are creating like really long-term like relationships of friends. And let's go with Mo. This is a startup where I've been working the past year. Um, during this presentation, we will see a little bit of the background, the problem we are trying to tackle, the personas, a little bit of market research, our solution, and then we will jump to go to market strategies and some success metrics. So before we start, I want to share this reflection with you. Um, it seems like um, many of the sectors have already finished their digital transformation, but in the tourism sector, these two worlds continue coexisting the OTAS, online travel agencies, and the tourism, uh, the, the traditional tourism travel agencies. So here I leave this question that, what do you think is gonna be the future of the trips? Like, uh, do you think there's a current trend in the future where we are gonna be only traveling with booking, only with a sky scanner? Because uh, on one side it's true that with just one click, we can get a, a, a ticket to Alaska, for example. But when we, when we travel, we know that we just not only take into account these two variables, like the efficiency or the autonomy that internet provides, we also um, look for suggestions, advices, um, I don't know, like whatever a human being can deliver that internet cannot do. And that is when the OTAs are not enough. That is when, um, that, that is when like they touch like a, like a ceiling, you know? And this is the situation where I think that in the future, the trips, should be a combination between the technology part of the OTAS and the humanity of travel agencies. So when we face this scenario, uh, these were like the four main problems we identified. Uh, the main one was, okay, so if we are thinking that the travel agencies are the ones that should be providing that local knowledge, do they really have that knowledge? Like does a uh, travel agency here in Spain knows about Alaska? Like, don't think so. Uh, the second problem we, we identified was um, 
we guess there should be some difficulties with in, uh, in house digital, digitalization. The third one was um, those local experts, those people that know a lot about the, the, the countries, they usually depend on B2C platforms like we already know, Civitatis, Get Your Guide. So uh, that was another problem that we think they, they had. And the fourth one is that we think there was a little data of how the travelers uh, uh, tra travel and everything. So we went through different validation methods to test all these problems. And basically the first two ones, we test them with, um, with interviews with, tra with uh, 40 travel agencies. And in the first case, 33 uh, of them agree that the majority of the time they were relying on incoming services to offer that local knowledge. Those are like uh, agencies that are located in the country. So basically they have to, uh, they charge them a high margin and sometimes they don't, they don't like, like working with them. Then with the second problem, what we realized is that like 90% of the travel agencies have just like seven employees. So with those little resources, they don't have capacity to lead their own digital transformation. That's why they associated with TMCs that are tourism management companies that are like associations where you pay a fee and you get some technology. And the third problem that we validate was, was um, what were the, the revenue streams that were having the local experts. And many of them confirmed that we're relying on Civitatis because from there, like 80% of the revenue was coming, uh, but they were not having many other options. And, and none of them in the case of working directly with travel agencies. And the last problem we validate and we did it through Hector um, data contacts. Uh, Hector is one of the co-founders and like he's been working uh, like in the data sector for a long time. And he has a lot of contacts in Amadeus and he was like, hey, like, do we actually like uh, analyze patterns of travelers or we just have information about like what are the most um, countries airplane tickets sold? So with this information, um, we identified these three personas. The first one, it was Antonio, like the terminal tr uh, travel agent, someone that uh, has a lot of difficulties dealing with technology. He knows that, and he's been said a lot of times that has to uh, digitalize, but he's uh, really uh, scared of that. Then, um, so the goal is to offer that experience to the customer, to its traveler, but, um, but, but he doesn't know really how to do it. Then we have Vanessa, um, she's like a local expert that uh, she's been like using these platforms, but she's, she's also aware that she depends a lot of them and she would like to find many, like some other uh, revenue streams. And then Marisa, um, that is a traveler that when she travels through an, through a, to a travel agency, she wants to get information that she could not get, for example, from Google. So she thinks that, um, that she would like to have an expert with her, but she don't wants to pay a lot. And on the other side, like mm, she wants to do that, but the travel agency doesn't provide that service. So with this, uh, at this point, we would be thinking, yeah, but Sarah, there should be some, some, some solutions out there in the market. So let's do a little bit of market research. The point is that um, this is a sneak peek of the market, um, but it's really interesting. Just to summarize, um, there are the, the, the independent travel agencies that are, there are, there are account for the 60% of the market. There are 40% left that accounts to, that they represent Viajes del Corte Inglés and all those that belongs to big groups, but there are 60% that are independent. And 50 or the total sales are just for packages, not the ones that are, are sold from tour operators, but the ones that they have to do under demand. Someone comes and they have to create like an itinerary or whatever, you know? So um, this is 19 million. And this is the moment where they have to provide or, or rely on all these platforms to get the free tour, to get the, the tour around the city or the, or the access to the museum. So what happens? Tivitatis is the leading player here. 80%, as I said before, comes from them. And also they have a powerful affiliation, affiliation um, system where they give 10% uh, of each activity book. However, and this is something that a lot of uh, lo uh, local experts um, worry about is that they don't have access to that client. So whatever problem happens, they have, they have like to, 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 
like imagine they have to postpone the meeting, they have to send a message, hey guys, we're meeting here, not there because uh, there's some like things going on in this square in this afternoon. So activitatis, uh, it's really uh, unflexible in that sense. And, and the, the local expert doesn't like, like working with them, but they don't have any other options because the second other options in the second case, like they are good. However, mm, there are not a lot of books through there because they don't offer an affiliation system. And in case of good work, this is growing a lot and it, there are also pains on the travel agencies are relying also on them. But the problem here is that uh, there are only free tours. So it's a lot of focus on B2C and, and they have really fewer cities. So with this, we said, okay, like um, we have already identified the pain points of our personas or are these enough, these solutions? We don't think so. What about if we combine the necessity of a travel assistant and the necessity of digitalizing and we create Mo? So Mo is a um, tool intelligent platform that enables these travel agencies to connect their travelers through an app with local experts to offer them a human remote assistance before, during and after the trip. So we have this application that enables that connection. And then we have this platform where the travel agency can monitor the trip in real time. To see a little bit overview, what would be happening is that, happening is that the travel agency um, at the trip of the experience, then assigns the right tour guide to that type of people, like depending on the language spoken, availability, uh, experience or specialities. Uh, he, the travel agency can actually enter to the profile of the tour guide to see more in detail, like how uh, does he interact with the people. And then with this code that we see here um, is what he, the travel agency provides that code to the, to the customer and the customer inserts on the app. So um, once he creates an account, it will include it here and then it will access to the trip. And as I said at the beginning, our storytelling is a lot about digitalizing all the customer journey, not only the beginning, but also the during and the after the trip. So once you get into the, this part, you will get into before the trip because the trip has not started yet. Uh, in just um, half clicks, you will be able to meet the local expert. So what would be happening? Like this is, this is gonna be a video of the local expert, for example, and these are different things that you will be having in that, in that screen. From uh, the sorry, just a super quick, be careful with the timing, just uh, thumbs up. Uh, when, when did I start? Yeah, you would have uh, already two minutes exceed, but don't worry, just for you to wrap up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, cielos. Okay, no, so I'll be fast. Um, so from the traveler panel, we see all these different um, screens like a form where they detail their preferences, the notification panel, then from the local expert panel, we can actually see uh, all the statistics about that group that the, it's going to attend, then how he sends all this, um, all the communications to the people in a segmented way, and then the reviews uh, that he has been receiving. Uh, in terms of the business model, during the first phase, uh, in order to grow, we will we will just charge uh, for the commission. So we would be a transition model and we would charge 50% of all the activities sold inside the app. And therefore we would be giving a 10 to the agency that has provided the travelers and we would just receive five. And this is for the future, so I'm gonna jump. Some of our competitive advantages uh, that we have an experienced team in tourism and technology sector that we have, um, like the core technology uh, has been de fully developed by Mogu and we have followed this uh, good and cheap um, decision because we ha actually had time. In terms of price, we offer the same commission as the, as the leader plus many other things. And we also have 10 commitment letters with top travel agencies willing to use Mogu in the future as well as we are connected in the travel tech sector. And we are almost finishing. And our go-to-market strategies would be uh, in order to capture travel agencies would be partnering with uh, the TMCs, the, the companies that I was telling you that uh, they all of them group many of the travel agencies that, that are in the market and we will offer them um, a commission of all the agencies revenues. If they were getting a 10%, they would be deciding if they get one or two. As you see, like Gea, for example, just has like 2000 in Spain. 
And also we would be providing these travel agencies a widget so that they can include it in their website and transmit this message that everything that they sell would be with the accompaniment of a personal assistant. And in the case of the local experts, would be uh, we are doing a mobile club that is basically a free course uh, where we teach them how to use the app. Uh, we give them digitalization tips, and this has been a completely success more right now more than ever because these people uh, is not working, and we are capturing a lot of leads in that sense. And just to conclude, uh, these are some of the success metrics we are uh, we will be using. Um, in terms of activ uh, activation and acquisition and activation, uh, as I said, the commitment levels that we have, accounts created in the platform, local expert apps sign apps, then uh, in terms of revenue, the average order value, and then many more that I think I cannot explain more because I don't have time. Yeah. And uh, if you lead me, my friends, I think this is a good video to finish uh, the presentations because it's actually a tour guide of how would be present uh, yeah we we'll be presenting in the app to the possible traveler so i'm just gonna put it it's really short and you tell me what you think bienvenidos a todos soy sony y voy a ser su guía acompañante durante todo este maravilloso viaje que no va a ser un viaje cualquiera va a ser una experiencia única inolvidable en la que vamos a disfrutar de los pequeños detalles que marcan la diferencia y lo vamos a hacer juntos Vamos a compartir, vamos a descubrir la historia, la cultura, la gastronomía, la arquitectura, cotillos de palacio, rincones desconocidos que no vienen en las guías turísticas. En definitiva, vamos a divertirnos, vamos a enriquecernos. Es su momento, su viaje, su sueño. Así que por favor, relájense, disfruten, déjense llevar, porque de todo lo demás me encargo yo. Así que bienvenidos de nuevo. Muchísimas gracias por confiar en nosotros. Y hasta pronto. Chao. Chao. Uh, so this was, uh, dejar de presentar. I hope you like it. And I hope you guys download the app. Thank you so much, Sarah, for an amazing presentation. Also, the ending was, I think, surprising for everyone. And, and I think the, the value proposition is quite clear. We already discussed this in the one-to-ones. Um, from my perspective, I think the, the content is super clear, super structured. The information was actually very, you know, well written, very clear also from, from our perspective. The only thing here I would say it's in the end, uh, product management is also learning how to use the content within, you know, the attention of the audience, right? So for example, um, regarding the presentation, I found that you spent a, quite a lot of time in the beginning with the market research, market fit, the product uh, itself. But in the end, which is the, the value proposition, the competitive advantage, you know, actually what's mogul, we had to rush a little bit, but actually it's because you have a, such a great product that I think it deserves to, you know, have more attention in actually the second part of the presentation from my perspective, right? So, yeah, because I, I, I would like to know more about it and go, you know, into that slides slower because I think it, it's really worth it and it's a great job. So it, you need to expose the job and recognize that. Yeah, thank you. I, I've, been, I've been struggling cutting the slides because uh, more at the end, like we just don't have one persona, we have three. Like um, in terms of capturing the market, we use, uh, I just said to uh, go to market strategies, but we are gonna use like five. So it was also uh, tough in that sense, but I know it's something I have to work on. So thank you, Romina. Don't worry, thank you. Okay, so we start the round of questions. Coffee. I loved your product. Uh, I'm from the travel industry and uh, I feel that it's, it's spot on. Like you're really fond of place and that there is, there is lots of competitive advantage. So really, really well done on that. Um, I, I actually love everything that you did. I just gonna second uh, what Romina said, like um, with, be careful with the current mode, like OTAs or MCUs or all those type of stuff because maybe our audience doesn't know exactly what we're referring to and they can get lost a little bit. On, on what you were explaining. Um, and maybe would worth it also because you have three 
clients, I would say, or three types of, of so many personas to, to sell it. Maybe to summarize a little bit each one of them and, and to the key points, because there's so many, it was, it was all about the content really, but there's so much content that was really difficult sometimes to, to follow. But besides that, I, I think it's, it's spot on, really well done. I want to jump, jump into the find my colleague because she did say the acronym, but she did say online travel agency. And I, I felt like she explained it. Maybe because I'm from the industry as well, but I, I felt that still she explained it. Just that. <laughs> Good. I think, um, um, yeah, I think it's a great presentation. Uh, it's a bit too long for my, for my taste and a bit too wordy for my taste as well. Uh, but that obviously depends on, on, on your audience. Uh, so the, the big takeaway for me is to just make sure you understand the audience before you go presenting. Um, I feel like a lot of the, the important information was lost in, in, in all the content, especially when you are talking about, even when you're talking about your market research, right? Um, uh, you could have simplified it with three keywords, for example. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention, I, I know a lot of us are always afraid to do this is, we always think that we have, and we know that we have lots of user personas and we struggle to pick our most important one. Um, I think that's also the true value of products and saying that, yes, our product is gonna be used by, by many different people, but let's, let's, I don't know, take a leap of faith and pick the one that's most important for us, right? Um, and this is just from a perspective of keeping it succinct in your presentation and then use the time for questions and answers to elaborate more. But, but yeah, I think the product looks, looks great. It looks, looks wonderful. Um, and uh, hopefully we're getting back to the days of traveling so we can, we can use it. Thank you so much, Kofi. As always, really good and useful feedback. <laughs> okay, so if everyone has any question or otherwise we go and jump into Sophie. Sophia, I think we hear you very low. Is it possible? Yeah, the volume. Maybe you need to put up the, the headphones volume. Let's see. Um, here? Mm. I don't think so. Oh. I think I see. Better? Yeah, better. Okay, I think yes. the computer. And uh, sorry, okay. Okay, so okay. yeah, it's uh, 8.35 more or less, okay? So otherwise yeah, you I put them, oh, you didn't tell me the time, blah, blah, blah. So. No, I put my, my, cro my chrono on. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll let you know when, when it's going beyond. Right. Okay, so off you go. Okay, so thank you for listening to me and the, on the last part. Um, and this is Better Write Letter. Um, we are pivoting our, our e-commerce uh, product. We are, we are going to structure this presentation on first on the problem, personas, and our solution, and then the actual solution on the market and our success metrics. So I want you to think and what is about your mental health and how did you feel since COVID pandemic? <laughs> so in the last 12 months, um, I want you to think a little bit about how you feel and we'll have a quick look on Spanish society. So this is the first uh, pain of the Spanish society. This is a survey that we had from the CIS, that is the Center for Sociological Research um, done in February 2021. And as you can see, almost all the population in Spain felt overwhelmed and stressed. And we can see that the biggest part of the population are the young adults, that they are from 18 year old to 24. Another same um, data about worryingness. Uh, and as you can see, the percentage is higher um, than the, the, for the slide before. And again, we can see that the young adults struggling the most. Another pain that is sadness feelings and depression feelings. 
um, the total society felt almost 20% this kind of feelings uh, in the pandemic. And again, we have a major score on the young adults uh, segmentation. And then um, the last data we, we are going to see is that uh, how people worried about the change of the society and that it won't be uh, the same as before. And then the data is like big, uh, more than half of the society fear of uh, and worry of the change of the society. And again, we have our, our, our segment, uh, biggest segments on the young adult. So I'm sure you assume our persona, we are going to study first on this platform will be the young adults. So I, sorry, I come back, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the problem is uh, we take a quote from the Confederation of Mental Health in Spain about the, the main problem uh, that in Spain, the mental health of the Spanish population plummets during the pandemic and there is no net below it. Okay, so it's just a statement to, to see that apart the pain, there is no service, not good service at, at all in, in Spain. So our personas, uh, we, are going for, we are going to first focus on the generation Z that they are from the 18 and 20 years old. And um, we have some key points of their behavior. Um, they don't like to define themselves on only one way. They have like an undefined ID. Um, they, they love to be on communities and communaholics, they like to be inclusive, they like to dialogue a lot, um, they are like very pragmatic, they're realistic people, and regarding the mental health problem, um, thanks to the social media, they are quite aware, so they normalize uh, easily the mental health, pro uh, they normalize it and they report easily that they are having mental, pro mental health problems. And um, they know that is one aspect of their life, and they can, and they know that it can be improved. So they are, they, there is a will that they want to have treatment in order to achieve their goals in life. So we will have a quick view on this kind, the, the four points we've seen on the data from the survey. Uh, we will we draw four personas, and this is Pablo, that is 18 years old, living with his parents and two brothers. So this is what the kind of quote Pablo will say that I feel overwhelmed and stressed out. COVID lockdown made me go trapped in my negative thoughts. I don't see my friends much and I spent most, uh, most of my time in my room playing, playing video games and following YouTubers. I wish I could be able to understand my feelings and get healthy mental habits. This is Nuria, she's 19 years old. She has, she's living in two house, divorced parents and she has a half sister, 35 years old. So Nuria says, I spend almost all my day on social media and I can't control it. I feel I'm looking for answers and a meaning of life there, but at the end, I feel depressed, excluded socially. I'm lost and I don't know how to focus on something I like. I will have to find a way how to motivate myself and go out of my room. <laughs> Sorry. Um, as a, so this is Maria, 22 years old, living with her mom, single mom, and uh, she's a transgender woman, and as a transgender woman, she fears that uh, she will struggle to find job opportunity that would suit her. So um, she sends more stigmatizations than ever, and uh, as she feels that the society change and it's getting more polarized, um, she, she, she's a little bit stressed by it. So she thought she was an autistic person, but she doesn't uh, feel, but now she's quite depressed and because she sees a dark uh, future. So she said, I will be happy to receive some guidance about my skills in order to get the right opportunities. And our last person now will be Navila, then 24 years old, living with her parents, uh, one sister and one brother. 2018, and uh, Navila says, uh, the quote, kind of quote, I arrived at Barcelona when I was eight. It had been a hard time for my parents and for me to feel accepted socially. Since COVID-19, I feel exhausted, stressed if my parents lose their job and my worry won't let me concentrate on my studies. I would love to share my feelings to someone that understands me. So with this kind of person, uh, we are going to, to first, uh, we, we thought about a platform solution. So we have to validate this first hypothesis uh, through surveys and interview, but for the presentation, I go straight to the, the platform solution. 
So Gen Z can choose to access to a private chat, private chat with a peer, a coach or a professional in order to express their feelings. Receive advice, therapy and local outdoor activity recommendations that help them to achieve their goals and feel better. So this is the kind of uh, journey map um, we drove like the first journey map that a user will do. Uh, first logging, then they will receive, um, they will follow an uh, onboarding survey when we will ask for the feelings and different steps that you will you have to follow. And then you have to do a first decision if it goes for a paid chat or if it goes for a free chat. And then the paid chat, it will can choose to, the user can choose to, to chat with a coach or therapist, or if you go for a free chat, it goes to a peers, so, uh, an, a user that is willing to help him and give him some, some advice. And then we have the, the option that the purchase, and if it's purchased, he has a guided letter to send. And if not, he does an exit survey and, say, and send it. Okay, I don't know what time I'm, I'm running, uh, I'm having now. I didn't check. Yeah, um, yeah, in my, it's already over <laughs> three minutes. Okay. But don't worry, I mean, you're, you're fine. Okay. So this the kind of wireframe we'll try to, we will we'll draw for the, on, the, the onboarding survey. Um, I've done a few of them, sorry. I didn't have much time. And this is the, oh, sorry. Sorry, because I'm getting, I don't know, I, I changed the way. Sorry, excuse me. Here. So user, how we get to them? So um, we go to, to as they are always on social media, we will do the social media ads to target the users and also the parents as parents are customers in that case. We will uh, send uh, press release in feminine, mac masculine, non-binary blogs as the users also don't like to be defined. So um, podcast and magazine. We will work on influencer collaboration to target the users and parents, different, uh, different influencers regarding the, um, if it's parents or if it's the user. And we will do like the co-branding action on mental health awareness with brand like LS in the case of user or brand like EcoAF uh, for parents. So I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so this is the um, journey map for the partner, which uh, a partner can be in our solution um, therapist, a coach or a professional that can guide for job opportunity. We need to think about that. And you will have like as the user an a bonding survey where you accept our terms and condition, which will be all the pricings and, and different um, privacy settings and then we will have like uh, you will receive the user uh, queries you will choose a query and then it will answer uh, the, the our letter or recommend and give recommendation platform local activity and then it will send okay and then if not it's exit and it's survey so how we get to the partners uh, again, we will do ad campaigns on social media and Google and Google ads too. We will go for a specialized channel medical care, uh, also on coach events and specialized uh, uh, coach um, uh, channels. And then uh, we also work, uh, we want to work with association, foundation and uh, universities. Sorry. So in the actual solution on the market, uh, what we've seen is that they already have existing a kind of uh, um, a lot of mental app um, that we have Talk Life, Wise Door, and Happyfy. And what the difference we can see in between all of them, Sunday, UI, Filter, Richard, and Your Pair, or Set and Mind, we have different uh, um, services. So one, like Talk, Talk Life, you will have a guidance with a peer, we have guidance with a coach, self-care programs, that is everything automated. And then you have an online community. And other ones are only therapy, pure therapy, you don't have a community. And 
Other one like Uber is uh, artificial intelligence app. So it's only by bots. And we have one locally in Valencia, which is set in mind and is self-care program um, with a, a guided program to feel better. So there, sorry, sorry. So um, there, uh, their business model is premium business model for most of them, monthly and yearly subscription, or payment for therapy chat per week, or payment for therapy uh, session. Our, our advantage there, what we want to really um, uh, be different in this kind of uh, application, is that we want to make sure people can have a community, a local community. So they have recommend, local recommendation to go outside on the, of the upward. So they can go to uh, an association or they can find an activity that they can also, with the advice, feeling better, but really getting into action. So success metrics, I won't scream, but it feels like I want to scream. Uh, social media that we will work on uh, will be acquisitions, so social media marketing campaigns, Google advertising, uh, CAC, activation uh, that makes sure that they download the app, sign up, onboard the survey, free chat, and uh, retention, referrals, and revenue. We will work on uh, subscription business model on weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. And we will have revenue from the advertising we, we are doing on the platform. And we will also take into account um, feedback. Obviously, this is the present for the presentation. But first, we will have to, to, to validate our, our hypothesis. So thank you. And uh, I'm really grateful to, to have been doing this course to, new, to know you all, and maybe to be able to pivot our Better by Letter project, thanks to the Code of Cards. Thank you, Sophie, for a great presentation. I really think you touched a very sensitive topic, and actually we've discussed about this also in the one-on-ones, yeah. which I think it, it's wonderful because in the end, your product is actually adding value to the healthcare, right? And mental yeah. health, and there's no price for that, right? Um, we want to have an impact, a social impact. So, so it's really, course. we want to help the people really. Indeed, I think everyone agrees that it's, it's been very challenging for everyone with their own personal context yeah. this year. And finding, you know, a bit of light, it's mm. always a, a good product, right? Even though maybe the KPIs are, are not so, you know, high at the beginning, but the fact that you're doing this, I think it's it's amazing as a product. Thank you. Um, from a presentation perspective, I think that it, it was quite clear. The only thing I have questions about is the hypothesis of the target audience, because you mentioned that Gen Z or Gen Z, it's your target, your main target. The first, no, is the really we want to 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 broad all the Spanish population, but we will we will first uh, validate if this Gen Z is the target. So, but we, we did your, the, the presentation on them because it was the uh, biggest uh, population that suffered uh, COVID consequences. Yeah, uh, indeed. So I believe they have a lot of challenges right now. Mm. But the first question that came up to my mind was the, the fact of self-awareness. Yeah, because the testimonies that you were mentioning, I believe they are super true and they are very honest. Like I have this problem and I want this product, mm -hmm. but th this level of self-awareness, I don't know if, go, if it goes at the same level of the generation that actually it's involved in the problem, right? Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, yeah. we have to check. Yeah, because you're talking about a generation that of course they have these problems and we all see it, but I don't know if they are self-aware to actually proactively look for your product. And you know, you need to have a sense of maturity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems, it seems what, what I said, uh, the, the figures of the background, it seems they do have this uh, awareness about their mental issue. It seems too, but of course we have to validate uh, the, the hypothesis.
Yes, uh, be careful because uh, I think we meant, I mentioned also a post in LinkedIn in which we were talking about product bias. Mm. And be careful because sometimes we want to find data to support our hypothesis. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. Support that hypothesis instead of actually doing the opposite way, like who's the target? And we're going to ask the market, right? I it's agree with you. Maybe it's the opposite, like this, we want this target because we think we have problems. So the data that you find is actually biased into your hypothesis. Well, the thing is like uh, our research time was very short. So I, we thought it was coherent for the presentation because yeah. the data we found it was, was mm -hmm. coherent. But of course, we, the, the, we are the at the top of the iceberg and we yeah. have a lot of big work to do. Uh, yeah. uh, if I can add something, because um, I, 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 do, I do think that younger than generations are aware of mental health much more than our generations and older ones. But my doubt there is if they are willing to pay or if they have the economical capacity to pay in something like that. Because maybe the, 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 the customer will be the parents or of yeah, them yeah, or the, something like that. We assume right now, uh, and we have to validate this assumption, but uh, we assume that uh, the customer, what, who is paying is the parents. Yeah. And I feel like your product has a lot to do with diversity, which is yeah. great. And I do remember something comes up in my Instagram all the time about LGBTQ mental health uh, psychologists and stuff that might be a competitor of yours, but I cannot find it now. So when I find it, I will send it to you. Thank you. But the competitor is great. It is not yeah. a <laughs> Sophie, can I add something? Yeah. Uh, I think for this uh, group of people, it's super important um, their role models. Like there are a lot in in these social networks, and they like their their model or their reference in the world is a YouTuber, an influencer. So uh, you mentioned that you one of your um, main channels would be doing collaborations with influencers. I would put the full focus on that because they are not gonna do it through another way. I think if if like if a YouTuber or an influencer on an Instagram story says, hey, I've been dealing with anxiety, uh, I just started this, this process, like that, that's when they're gonna uh, yeah, yeah. Just try it. Thank Even you. Instagram and TikTok are great channels to check that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Sophie, um, I would add a little bit of what kind of everyone said, like, um, I think it's, the product, of course, is great. The idea is really, really amazing. Um, maybe one strategy is also to consider or to focus first on a group that can maybe provide this economic, um, an economic side as well, uh, meaning maybe the second group or the third group with more mental health, but they still could um, potentially pay for the product, uh, mm -hmm. are the ones that could start focusing it. And then you grow to that bigger group and larger group because you're gonna have the economic foundations of those that can, that can pay for your products. So maybe that's also something to consider, not only what you found with the data, which I think it's, it's amazing, but then also what is the economic side of those people that are within those clusters. Okay. Um, and then maybe you can also direct your strategy to maybe focus first on a group that can maintain your company. And then from that, you grow to this larger group of people that are more in need, but maybe with less economic power or awareness, et cetera. But really well done. Thank you. That's okay, it. so perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Does somebody want to add something to Sophie's presentation? Coffee, I know you want to. <laughs> we can't hear you. You're mute. Sorry, we can't basically just want to, to echo what Romina said about your 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 validation of the problem. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it was actually through a, like a unbiased questions to actually figure out whether there is really a problem or not. And uh, but besides that, I think if if that problem really exists, um, I think you're on course for for something. 
uh, your next challenge is to figure out like what the price point is going to be and, and how much people are willing to pay for that. The, the issue I see that uh, we want to be very affordable to break down barriers because uh, here in, in almost the, the, the mental health is really expensive or really late if you go to, through public. So, but we want this human contact too. So we need to think and, and test. Anyways, so thank you so much, girls. And I want to also give some time to Katrina to, to talk because we've been all talking. Yeah, um, no, I mean, listen, this was our third time running the course. And um, I checked in with all of you last week and really appreciated the conversations that we had. And um, there's no question, this is a really inspiring, top-notch group of students. Um, obviously, something that stood out was this fact that you know you're all entrepreneurs and so you had a different relationship to this course and have certainly i mean already as i mentioned in our conversations in the last cohort these were not entrepreneurs but the way in which the program prepared them to present and to pitch reminded me of what i was seeing when i would watch you know pitch pitching sessions um and i and i would even argue that like our pitches were so much stronger than some of the other pitches I had seen at like top notch VCs. Um, and, and that's where this idea came to be of like, hey, maybe, maybe there's something more here um, for this product management course. Um, maybe we need to include some um, angel investor networks, especially that are interested in, you know, funding women. And certainly I've came across a lot of these networks. And I think it would be super cool to add that to this. And so all to say, um, you know, thanks for being inspiring. Thanks for sharing your feedback. Uh, this is a product in and it of itself. So it's fun to talk about product development with you all who are entrepreneurs learning about product management. Um, so thanks for this. Um, congratulations also to Romina. This was your first time teaching. And um, I mean, always, this, you know, the, the final projects are a projection of um, your efforts that have gone into teaching. And so it's been a really lovely group. Um, I'm also happy to see, I mean, at this point, it's starting to feel like a family, seeing Kofi, Adriano, Eduardo. Um, I'm really proud of how this is evolving. And um, just this, I'm excited. I wanna see how all of this manifests. Um, I'm, I'm super, super impressed. I'm super, super impressed. And if any of you are interested, obviously, in getting some introductions to investors, um, I'm more than happy to, I don't know, come, we, we could even pilot like this, this idea that we have, and you could be the first cohort that's um, using what you just pitched to actual investors. So um, yeah, this is just the beginning, my friends, but amazing work. Yeah, I think uh, we all mm -hmm. want to thank you, Katrina, also for organizing mm -hmm. the course. It has been amazing, it has been a journey for everyone, a community feeling from the very first day, I think. And also thanks to MF and to Ruth for organizing everything. They've been super attentive in the chat with everything. And uh, yes, as, as I mentioned with the girls in the last session that we had, we will have a wine soon and because we hmm. created that community and we want to share our thoughts. We want to be there for each other. So I think this is going to be a long-term relationship. I hope so. <laughs> totally. Thank you, yeah. thank you guys, because you, you you've been amazing to us. Really, you've been yeah. like a, a step up. Uh, really, really great team, great, great, great professors team. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I, I told you, Katrina, the, the course for me exceed the the expectation, and and that's really to be thankful uh, for uh, because we are. Very busy. We are founders. Uh, we have a lot of things to do. But yet, every every Monday and every Tuesday, we were here, like struggling with the English and and doing everything <laughs> and 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 learning, learning and sharing. So thank you very much. It was great. It was really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and really appreciate that, uh, like the good combination of all the teachers because you guys are really different, but you're good at your thing. You know. Like, for example, the last session that we did with Eduardo, it was reviewing our curriculum to make it like the top one. And this is something that is like 
it's obvious that he's really good on that, you know? Uh, so that's something that like from my volunteering perspective, it's really difficult to find people that uh, is really good at something. And like, I remember the classes with Adriano where like he, he's the one that uh, builds that community and uh, that creates like this group session stuck with the girls, stuck with it. And yeah, and like, well, I'm not gonna review your key. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, like to point out what I appreciate the most is that I learned like from many different skills and that's mm -hmm. something I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, yeah. like I said at the beginning of my presentation, and is I've been to way too too many courses or seminaries. I think we also talked about that from all the incubators and, and accelerators. And honestly, thank you for this one because to me the most important thing is that what I have learned here, I have applied straight away into my company, and it has mm -hmm. made a difference. So to me, that's that's with that I am more than happy, and I think that's mm -hmm. what any course should aim for not to know a lot but to be practical and actually um, use it yeah yeah i um if i may also uh yes um well thank you everyone uh for for your support for organizing for being there the the girls um i think uh, also building on on what you um you girls are saying I felt that when I was working on the presentation, you know, I was like, oh, this was what we did with Adriano. This was what Romina said it was important. This, but I don't remember working one night, it's like, this is coffee, you know? <laughs> so I think it was, um, it's been uh, really cool uh, in terms of team, structure, support, learning, and uh, practical. I think it's already implemented in our lives. So thank you. Maybe Romina's. Yeah, Romina. <laughs> Romina went out. Anyway, Romina's so, out. So just to say, um, anyways, this is not the end. Uh, there's a post survey that obviously we would love to hear your your final reflections. Okay. Um, you have all, con you know, graduated. Congratulations. Congratulations, girls. <laughs> Um, I think when you hear your instructor's voice, um, when the instructor's thinking is in your mind, this is always a really good sign. Um, it means the knowledge, you've acknowledged, you know, you've acquired the knowledge of your instructor and the it system. Seems we are quite annoying, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, shut up, shut up. Anyway, so have a good evening. Um, and looking forward to seeing you guys next. Hope that's yeah. soon. Thank you, girls. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, Hello, everyone. Really hope <laughs> to see you again. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.